This program will provide basic information and installation instructions for Raycam's WRSS wraparound repair sleeve. The WRSS sleeve incorporates a high-strength, reinforced, heat-shrinkable wraparound sleeve with an internal coating of hot-melt adhesive. Together, they establish a durable, watertight and pressure-tight seal to the existing cable jacket. This sleeve is intended for use on pressurized or unpressurized air core or filled cable with lead or polyethylene sheath. Open flame torches can be dangerous when used improperly, resulting in personal injury and damage to existing plant. Use extreme caution and observe your company's approved safety practices. In order to ensure the proper performance of the WRSS sleeve, certain procedures must be followed. Pressurized cable must be vented and bled to zero before and during application of the WRSS sleeve or a PATH-2 installed to vent pressure during installation and cooling. If pressure is present without a PATH-2, it can create leak paths through the softened adhesive during recovery. The cable may be repressurized when the sleeve and channel are cool to the touch. It is important to protect existing plant from the torch flame. A Raycam AD1460 fiberglass heat shield pad may be used for this purpose. Be sure to use temporary bonding procedures where indicated and use only approved connectors and bonding hardware. The WRSS sleeve should be installed in work areas where the temperature is above zero degrees Fahrenheit. Do not place the sleeve on any opening suspected of being wet. Thoroughly dry any wet opening per approved practice. Take precautions to ensure that no water comes in contact with the repair area during sleeve installation. The WRSS sleeve is available in three sizes and can accommodate cable and repair bundle diameters from 35 one hundredths of an inch up to five inches. First, let's examine the procedures for installing a WRSS sleeve on damaged polyethylene sheath cable. When installing the WRSS sleeve, it is very important to properly prepare the cable. In the case of pressurized cable, vent and bleed the cable to zero pressure, or plan to use a PATH-2, Raycam's pressure access flange. Remember, if a PATH-2 is not used, the cable must remain depressurized throughout the entire installation, recovery, and cooling process. First, clean and dry the cable jacket in the repair area. Trim away any badly distorted cable jacket. With a carding brush or abrasive strip, thoroughly scuff the cable jacket for a minimum of six inches on each side of the repair area. Be sure to abrade around the cable circumference, not along the cable length. Measure six inches out from the repair area and place one and one half laps of four inch aluminum tape one inch inboard of this mark. Smooth the aluminum tape with a blunt object. Measure the minimum and the maximum diameter over which the WRSS sleeve is to be applied and refer to Table A in the printed installation instructions to select the proper size WRSS kit. The sleeve must be long enough to cover the repair area plus six inches on each side of the repair. It should extend one inch over each section of aluminum tape. The remaining three inches of tape will protect the cable from flame damage. If your repair requires less than a full 48 inch WRSS sleeve, the sleeve may be cut to fit. Position the sleeve against the cable and over the repair area. Mark the sleeve so that it covers one inch of aluminum tape on each side of the repair area. The rail area of the sleeve may be cut with tabbing shears, diagonal cutters, or snips. When cutting the sleeve body, be sure that the cut is square and straight. Trimming a sleeve usually requires that you shorten at least one of the sections of metal channel as well. The channel should overlap each end by at least one half inch, 
but not more than one inch. After the channel is measured and marked, flex the channel at the mark until it breaks. Cut off the ragged edge with side cutters, then dull the finished edge with a small file. Now, using an approved torch, Flame treat the polyethylene jacket where the WRSS sleeve is to be installed. Only light treatment is required, typically about five seconds per foot. Be careful not to overheat the jacket. Center the WRSS sleeve so that three inches of aluminum tape extends beyond the sleeve at each end. On aerial cable, position the sleeve so that the channel is not directly under the strand and is away from the pole. Assemble the WRSS sleeve over the cable by joining the rails together. Place the retention clip on the center of the sleeve. Then slide one of the metal channels over the rails at one end of the sleeve and down toward the clip. Always slide the smooth factory end of the channel on first. Slide a second metal channel from the other end of the sleeve toward the center. Slide both channels onto the retention clip. Before proceeding with recovery, make sure that all equipment and adjacent plant is protected from possible torch damage. A Raychem approved AD 1460 heat shield pad or equivalent should be used. Ignite the torch with a striker and adjust the flame for shrinking. Preheat evenly along the rail channel area until this area begins to shrink. Always keep the torch moving. Now, heat around the sleeve, starting at the center and working toward one end. After completely recovering the first end, return to the center and begin to work toward the other end. If obstructions, wind, or other conditions will not permit use of this method, start shrinking at one end, working continuously to the other end. Keep heating the sleeve until shrinking is complete and all the heat sensitive paint is fully converted. Now, continue to heat the rail channel area for another five seconds per foot. When the WRSS sleeve is used over any diameter changes, take a blunt object and conform the channel to the transition area. Check your work. Verify that the sleeve has drawn down tightly over the repair area. Make sure that all the heat sensitive paint on the exterior of the sleeve has been converted. And check both ends of the sleeve to confirm adhesive flow. When the channel is cool to the touch, the cable may be moved or repressurized. If the installation has been on aerial cable, support the repair area to the strand with lashed cable supports. This WRSS installation is complete. The procedures for applying WRSS sleeves on lead sheathed cable are very similar to those for polyethylene jacketed cable. There are only two differences. First, no aluminum tape is required at either end of the sleeve. Secondly, before assembling the sleeve over the repair area, the lead sheath surrounding the repair should be evenly heated until it is very warm to the touch. All other assembly and heating instructions are identical to polyethylene cable installation. If it becomes necessary to re-enter a WRSS sleeve, use the following procedure. First, in the case of pressurized cable, vent and bleed to zero pressure. If the sleeve is installed on ring or lashed cable, remove the cable supports. With an approved torch, reheat the entire sleeve evenly. Immediately after reheating, use a sharp sheath knife to cut along one side of the rail and channel. Do not cut in toward the cable center. Angle your blade into the...